Check, check, check. Hey, 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 hey. This is Michael J coming to you live from the alumni tent. And man, I tell you what, everything is going just beautifully. Uh, as you can hear the background noise, I haven't switched over yet, but yet and still, you can hear the music in the background, and, and they are live, folks. I mean, everything is pushing, and the people, the fans back here, they're just, oh wow, it's, it's a beautiful sight. The DJ is going, music is going. And as you can see back there, I'm just gonna do a quick pan. As you can see the top of my head, but at the same time, wow, I mean, everybody is just here having a good time getting ready for this all corn game. And I'm gonna have to make sure that I'm not over modulating here so you can actually hear me clear and and without any issues or without any problems but yet and still how you doing folks and i'm gonna have to keep this shade over my head right now because it's really sunny and i am right in front of the sun here uh, and i apologize for that because most of the time i don't like to be right here but uh what's happening is that unfortunately i was not able to get the kind of spot I really wanted to have, but at the same time, uh, just to be able to broadcast from here, and I know my signal is really intermittent in terms of being able to get in and get out, uh, so hopefully you have, you're able to hear and you're able to see what's going on. This is a really, really, really bright day, folks. And all I have to say is that, how you doing? And I hope you're here and I hope you're enjoying. And for what we have, we are right in the, right behind the beautiful stadium. The beautiful JSU Tiger Stadium. And making sure I switch over so you can see it there. We are right in the shadows of the game that will take place between the Jackson State Tigers and the Alcorn State Braves. There's a lot that's on the line today uh, in this game. And as I said, you got the Tigers here and so much that's on the line today. And we're hoping that the Tigers prevail. And as I tilt down and we get a chance to see the crowd that's here for the tailgate. And, and they are out here today. The area that I'm in right now, you may not see quite a few, but trust me. It's 11 o'clock here. The game time is not until 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. I know if you're following me on the p.m. side, the game will start at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time but right now this game is set up to start at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time it is 11 o'clock and guys just look at the crowd they're already out here they're already here they're making sure that they enjoy this just the time and there are brave fans that are out here there are Jackson State fans that are out here uh, I'm right here in the alumni tent and as I said this is where we are home of the JSU Tigers and it's a beautiful sight today folks and and all I have to say is this and like I said I apologize for not being able to get a chance to see but the Sun is right here I may eventually take off my hat uh, so you guys can actually have a better view uh, of me because uh, how you doing? <laughs> but the only problem is, and this is actually some of the things that I actually teach my class, is what are you going to do 
when you have someone with a hat on. I mean, you have to make sure that they can see you and that they can see what's going on. So I'm actually doing something that I tell my class not to do. But the other side of this is because of how I'm situated, uh, I should have changed my setup, but unfortunately, I couldn't bring my tent in. I couldn't set up my tent so I could have it for us to uh, have cover. But that's something that you have to work with. You have to work with what you got, right? And since I had, ooh, and since I had to work with what I had, then guess what? This is what I got to work with. And I am going to work with this. So I say thank you very much to everyone that's here at JSU. And I thank them for allowing me to be able to broadcast live from JSU. And as I said, I'm hoping that you guys have a really, really good signal as I broadcast from today. But there is a lot, guys. Oh my gosh, there is so much that's happening today. This is the day you either win or just stay at home. Uh, in the MIAC, in the SWAC, this weekend will decide for the MIAC who plays in the Celebration Bowl. As for the West, as for the East Division, well, let me, let me first start off here. Since the Jackson State Tigers are in the East Division, the East Division has already been decided. The East Division champs will be Florida A&M. So Florida A&M will represent the East Division in the SWAC Conference Championship game that will be held in Tallahassee on December 2nd. My goal is to be there and to broadcast live from that particular event and just to make sure we have a pregame show for you at that time and so that's the goal and that's what we're hoping for and and I think for everything that's going on today what we're looking to do is just make sure that we are ready we are broadcasting and we have content available for you so you can enjoy and as a matter of fact I see uh, unfortunately for everything that's going on for me here uh, I may not be broadcasting live, but yet and still, everything is being recorded for you. So this will be uploaded for you guys later on today. But as I said, we are live right now from JSU, and we're right here in the alumni tent. And what I do have to say, folks, is the amount of people that are starting to come in, game time is not until three hours from now. And I'm serious. This is three hours. And for the fans that are here, uh, we're right here in the tent, and, and you can see all of the folks that are out here. And, and they are lining up, making sure that they, uh, they're lining up, making sure that they are part of the Alumni Association, whether or not they are JSU grads or they made a mistake and they went the other way, went to Alcorn. I do see one or two Alcorn Braves in that line, but yet and still. Win or lose, we will still pray for them. <laughs> and, but you know what, like I tell everyone, it's all about having fun. And it's all about what we can do for each other. And, and the bottom line is, is each and every time we're able to come together, that's what it's all about. And, and we just try to make sure that we're here for each other and whatever we can do however we can promote what we're doing that's it and and that's the bottom line now uh, what I do want to take the time to do is make sure we go back and we revisit some of the scores from some of the other games and we're going to take a look at what's available and what we actually have from some of the other conferences and as we talked about the CIAA SIAC their season is over but we're gonna go back and take a look at some of the at, at the at the standings and what's happening this week 
in the CIAA and also in the SIAC. So for this week, for the standings, this is the these are the standings for the CIAA. And so as far as the CIAA is concerned, this is what we're looking at. As you can see for the CIAA, you had Virginia Union and Fayetteville State. Those were the top dogs in that particular conference. And they were able to stand out above everyone else. And they made sure above all else, they were the cream of the crop for everything that transpired in the, in the uh, CIAA. And eventually, guess what happened? Uh, when those two teams met because those two teams actually had to meet up those two teams actually had to play each other and when those two teams met up and they had to play each other guess what transpired Virginia Union came out on top and they came out on top by a score of 21 to 10. Now, can I say that was kind of a surprise? The reason why I say that was kind of a surprise was this. Fayetteville State had made it to the championship game five years in a row. Last year was their fifth straight year making it to the CIAA championship. But guess what actually transpired? When they made it, year five, they finally, finally was able to pull off a victory. And with that victory, they won their first championship. So this year, being their sixth year, a lot of individuals thought that, okay, we got a chance to see them repeat as champions. However, as we see, Virginia Union was able to win and take that victory. And they were able to say, okay, sorry folks, but not today. And as you can see, Virginia Union won that game by a score of 21 to 10. And with that victory, Virginia Union plays today at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at, at Cutstown, Pennsylvania. And they will play the number three team in their bracket, Cutstown. And I'm hoping I pronounced that name correctly because I heard someone else um, pronounce it another way. But as I said, for this particular game, Virginia Union will play today at 1 p.m. And as you can see, 1 p.m. against Cutstown, the number three team in their bracket, Division II playoff. And what I have to say to you guys is please make sure you take the time to support this team. Because what happens is that each and every team that's out that participates, they need your support. So please make sure you take the time to support uh, that you take the time to support them because if you don't take the time to support them who else will and as we continue on to move around and see what teams did what now we go to the SIAC and as far as the standing goes for the SIAC as you can see Benedict was on top but let's go back let's revisit something last year and previous years the SIAC they essentially had two divisions and with the new commissioner when he came in he decided you know what instead of there being a division two divisions let's have the best against the best and with the best playing against the best that's what they wanted to make sure that they showed up and with that being the case, here you were with the best playing against the best. And now you had Benedict playing against actually Albany State. This is one of their older, this is one of their older set, uh, standings here. But what transpired is that Miles College beat Tuskegee which was in line, all they had to do was win. They did not end up winning. And Albany State, excuse me folks, Albany State defeated Fort Valley State, which set up a meeting 
between Albany State and Benedict. Benedict all throughout the year had essentially walked through the conference like a hot knife through butter. No one was able to come close except for Miles College. Miles College actually had a lead in that game against Benedict. But in the fourth quarter, Benedict was able to come back and they were able to take that victory against Miles College. And hence, they were able to stay undefeated. So that was great for what they did. And it was just a beautiful thing uh, that Benedict was able to stay undefeated. Of course, Miles didn't like it, but unfortunately, Miles lost to Benedict as well as everyone else in the conference for the SIAC. And with that, that set up the championship game between Benedict and Albany State. And with this game between Benedict and Albany State, there's the score, folks. Benedict defeated Albany State by a score of 47 to 10. And it was something that a lot of people expected, actually. And even though Albany State had their hopes that, well, maybe we can defeat them this year. Because last year, Albany State hosted Benedict in their hometown just for a regular season game. And Benedict took it to Albany State and they defeated Albany State in their stadium. But this year for the championship game, as you can see, Albany State lost to Benedict again two years in a row by a score of 47 to 10. And we're going to go back and take a look at the crowd here. The crowd is getting a little bit thicker in the alumni tent here as we take, a, take our time and pan the crowd. We can see all in and what's going on. People are enjoying themselves. People are having a good time. Uh, as you can see, you also see a nice long line there. Trying to get in, trying to get some food, and try just, just enjoying themselves. And, and this is what it's all about, folks, as people are coming in just enjoying themselves and having a good time. But before I go any farther, I do want to go back and talk about because we talked about Virginia Union and where Virginia Union was going to be and what Virginia Union's uh, status was going to be uh, for the game, uh, for the playoffs. Benedict also qualified for Division II playoffs. And because Benedict was number four overall in Division II, uh, in Division II standings, they were able to qualify for a number one spot, which means Benedict has a bye for this weekend. And so congratulations to Benedict for being able to have a bye this week. And they're able to sit back, prepare for the team that they will be facing next week. But in some cases, that may or may not be a benefit because last year they also had a bye. And unfortunately, it was not a benefit for Benedict. They ended up losing in their first game. So hopefully, hopefully, Benedict is able to learn from their errors, learn from their mistakes, and make sure that they do a lot better this year than they did last year. And if they are, it'll be a beautiful thing to see them uh, do well and prepare to do a lot better and before we go to the MIAC and the SWAC I am going to just let you guys take a look at the crowd and go from there Okay, okay, folks, and we are back. We are back here and enjoying ourselves. And now the sun has 
hidden behind a cloud for a few seconds and and looking a little shady here on my end but trying to accommodate for the sun and the location that we have here and and I'll make sure that this is sent out later on today but we were talking about the SIAC and the CIAA and how well each of those conferences were doing and where they were headed to in the playoffs but this is about the Celebration Bowl between the MEAC and the SWAC. And this game here between Jackson State and Alcorn has major implications as far as who will qualify for the MEAC and the SWAC. Now, as far as everything goes, folks, what actually takes place here today is that What's actually taking place today is that Jackson State will play Alcorn. Alcorn made a mistake and lost. But you know what? Before we get there, let's take a look at the MEAC situation here. Last week, we're going to take a look at what actually transpired with the MEAC. And as far as the MEAC goes, this is what actually took place. And as far as the MEAC, you had Morgan State defeating South Carolina State and we'll get into the implications that of that Morgan State win and next you had Howard University defeating North Carolina Central major implications here and also you had Norfolk State defeating Delaware State but that's not the thing folks the major thing that actually happened here was what actually transpired between Morgan State defeating South Carolina State and Howard defeating North Carolina Central. All North Carolina Central had to do was just win the game. And if they had won the game against Howard University, they would have punched their ticket to the Celebration Bowl. All they had to do, all they had to do was defeat one team Howard University Howard University had already lost to South Carolina State South Carolina State defeated Howard for Coach Pugh's last home game at South Carolina State and so they gave him a nice send off winning their homecoming game at home against Howard University thank you very much Coach Pugh for all of the years that you have spent coaching this team thank you very much and so South Carolina State the football team and everyone gave them a great gave him a great send-off winning that game and they had a great parade and, and, and great everything for coach Pugh but when we saw that loss okay well North Carolina Central should not have an issue they should not have a problem winning the game against Howard University so North Carolina Central should just walk right into this game with no issues, no problems whatsoever. However, as the score shows, folks, Howard was not able to just defeat North Carolina Central. They really put a bum rush on North Carolina Central. And, <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, just take a look at that score. 50 to 20. Now, I was told uh, this was a little bit of a revenge factor game because what, tra what happened is that what happened is that Central put a 50 spot on Howard in a previous meeting. And guys, I was watching this game. And let me tell you, in watching this game between Howard and and in North Carolina Central, they just kept going. Howard, I mean, in some cases, NCCU couldn't stop Howard in certain situations. The score was 42 to 20. And all of a sudden, Howard was able to score another touchdown. The score was 48 to 20. So I essentially said, the game is over. Okay, well, they're just gonna go ahead and kick an extra point. No, 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 folks. They did not kick an extra point. 
And like I said, please excuse me, folks, for wearing my hat. But right now, this sun is coming right in my eyes. And even though this was a spot that the alumni gave me, um, I should have chosen another location. And this is against everything that I actually promote and everything that I actually teach. So I apologize for this. But at the same time, but as I was saying, for this Howard, North Carolina Central game, Howard said, you know what? They hung a 50 spot on us. So we're going to see if we can hang a 50 spot on them. And guess what they did? The score was 48 to 20. Now, if the score had been 47 to 20, they may have gone ahead and kicked an extra point, probably. But they had an opportunity to score 50 against Central. So what they did is that they went for two with less than two minutes to go in the game. And as you can see, they scored <laughs> the 50 against North Carolina Central. I have not I have not been able to see uh, or find out what was said uh, in that game. And I am seeing a beautiful young lady that I actually marched with in JSU in the band. And I'm like, oh my gosh, here we are, here I am. I'm looking like I'm toe up from the floor up. She hasn't aged not one bit. I'm like, really? So. Why don't you come in, and uh, you're on camera right here. So I want you to say hi, and as a matter of fact, get you a mic here, and just say hi to everybody. Yeah, just say hi to everybody. Let me make sure. Let me make sure you're turned on here. So, and if not, then what I'll do, I'll give you my mic. Yeah, go ahead and say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. Yeah, there you go. Introduce yourself and tell what tell everybody what you did. I'm Valerie Grace. In a couple of weeks, I'll be 57 years old, and I just won. I won first place at a women's uh, natural bodybuilding competition for women's uh, physique, 35 plus, and women's open. It's actually my fifth competition. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> see, see, this is what I'm saying. Uh, everybody, now, now tell what you did with the boom. Hmm? Tell what you did when you were here at Jackson State. At Jackson State, I was a clarinet player uh, for, I think it was three years before I transferred. And I'm also a member of Tau Beta Sigma Sorority, bring 86. This is my sorrow. Yes. So, because I'm also a member of KK Psy as well. And are you serious? You are... I'll be 57 on November the 28th. I promise you, folks, she only looks maybe a year older when we march together. Oh, no. <laughs> Trust me. Yes, you do. Oh, my God. But see, this is but see, this is the beauty of coming to the football game. We're able to come back, meet up with old friends, people we actually march with. Yeah. So tell me, you're a bodybuilder now. Yes. What, what what got you into this? Well, actually, I started exercising at 36 because I was diagnosed with high blood pressure at that age. And then I also was a little bit overweight after being almost 200 pounds. Really? Yes. So I started running. I started walking first. And then walking turned to running. And I kind of, like, challenged myself to do something more each time. Yes. And so I became a runner for the Mississippi Track Club, and I started doing races. Uh, with them and then after that I got pregnant at 41 I had a baby at 41 <laughs> <laughs> oh so so you followed our, our timeline too yeah yeah I, I understand <laughs> so after that happened and when I got ready to start by exercising we found out I had an old injury in my knee that I could not run anymore so I became I a jump rope instructor I started jumping rope and I started jumping rope led to being a jump rope teacher I started teaching spin, step, boxing, and accelerated heat classes. COVID came, and they yeah. counted out all the classes, so I had to figure out another way, and then that's when bodybuilding came. So I've only been doing bodybuilding for probably about a little over three years. Wow. Yes. And see, 
this is what we have to do. I also have another show that's called Affairs of State, where we talk about the issues that affect African American communities. Right, right. And you stated something that is really close to me, high blood pressure. Right. And you did something about it. Right. Why did you do something about it? Because, because the reason why the reason why I say that is because so many of us have high blood pressure. Right. And we do nothing about it. Right. So why did you do something about it? I wanted to be around for my children. I wanted to be here for my children. And that that's what did it. And all attributed to bad eating. A lot of the things we eat, not good. A lot of the seasonings that we use are not good. Uh, now, all my foods are pre uh, prepared fresh. I cook them myself. See? I use a lot of organic seasoning. Any seasoning that you see that does not have, that has a name on the back you cannot pronounce, it's a preservative, and that's sodium. Add it on top of to whatever else salt that you're putting in it. So that actually what helped me with my high blood pressure. Now I take, once you're on the medication, basically sometimes you don't get off of it. But I only take it maybe once or twice a week, the lowest dose. Oh, really? Right. And I manage water is so important in your diet. Because your body is 70% water. When you don't put water, everything that's in your system is concentrated, including the salt. You heard it from someone right here, folks. Because everything that's going on, everything that she did has made a difference in, in what she did. And yeah. she said she weighed 200 pounds. If you could literally see what she looked like now, you would say there is no way on God's green earth she ever weighed anything close to 200 pounds. But this is what you do when you take the time to say, okay, enough is enough. But there are individuals that are out there because of hyper hyperthyroidism or hypo thyroidism. I had subclinical hyper after I had the last baby. Oh, okay. and it's yeah. Um, all of my T3, T4 cells were out of whack. Mainly, the way to get that kind of in check is your metabolism. To get your metabolism in check is to have a daily routine every day for everything. It's almost like clockwork. Everything works on a clock. Yes. So if you exercise every day, eat a certain time every day, everything goes in order. Yes. The minute you mess up, skip a meal. Your metabolism gets off whack because it doesn't know what to do itself. You don't have anything for it to metabolize, it stops. And see, I understand exactly what you're saying. Uh -huh. Because see, I have family members. My wife also has hypo uh -huh. uh, thyroidism. Uh -huh. And with the medication and uh, all of the things that she has to go through. Yeah, right. And, and so I understand exactly what you're saying. I actually personally had hyperactive thyroid. And fortunately I've gotten that under control. But I need to do I need to do what she did and control my eating. <laughs> so, right, but right. And, and that's the one thing we're guilty of is that we have to make sure that we control our eating more than anything else. Right. And so as soon as we control our eating habits, the African American community as a whole won't suffer as we're suffering now. Well, I know you didn't come here to talk to me, but thank you very, you're welcome, very much. You're welcome so much for having me. Yes, because see, this is what this is what it's all about. When you get a chance to learn, when you get a chance to hear from someone that where they've made a difference in their lives and what and how they transform their life, mm -hmm. it really makes a big difference. Thank you very much for taking the time to share. And I just want to grow up to just be like this. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean. When I march, see, you have not changed. <laughs> I mean, you really haven't. I mean, I remember you mm -hmm. when you came in. I was yes. a sophomore. You were a freshman. Uh -huh. She still looks the same. Still looks the same. So, uh, mine is just gray stuff on my face. Yeah, and about 50 pounds heavier. <laughs> yeah. So I understand, but I'm gonna let you go. But thank you very much. You're oh welcome. my gosh. This, see, this is what it's all about. So again, hopefully I get a chance to see you later on in here. Yeah. And if I do, then yes, we're going to continue to talk because this is what it's all about. Thank you so much again for having me. Hey. And, and you have you. a good one. Are you good? Great to Thank see you. 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 Yes. Yeah. Oh, watch your step. Watch your step. Okay. And see, folks, this is what it's about. 
is having a chance to see old friends. I marched with Val. I, I marched with her. She was absolute. Oh, great clarinet player. Absolutely phenomenal clarinet player when I marched with her. And and so for her now to be a bodybuilder and doing all of the things and I and I and I think that this is her uh, her son. I don't know if this is her son and her husband that that are right in front of me. Are you? Are you her husband? Are you Val's husband? This is her son? Uh-huh. And this is the son? Yes, sir. See, I'm looking at him right now, so um, I have I have a late baby as well. And so mine hits 18 later on this month. And how? when does he hit 17? And see, he's 15. So she had him when she was 41. And see, my wife and I had our last baby when we were 40. And so it's like, we're too old for this. <laughs> and so I understand what she's going through. Talking to her husband right now, I understand what they're going through. And uh, so it's like, yeah, we're too old for this, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, and, and so looking at him being 15, looking at them, and I'm like, yeah, I understand. So, so guys, y'all be good. Y'all be blessed. And, and just to see her, see them enjoying everything that's going on, this is what it's all about, folks. This is great. I know I got sidetracked in terms of talking about um, talking about what was going on with the MEAC. But I was thinking about changing microphones, but I'm going to keep, keep the one that I have. And so looking at this... Ah. So looking at this and what we actually have, folks, is we were talking about Howard and we were talking about North Carolina Central and Morgan State. And this is the record for the MEAC. And as you can see, the record for the MEAC, you have North Carolina Central, they're at three and one. Howard University is at three and one. Morgan State is now at three and one. And so if you look at the record, of course, North Carolina Central above everyone, the only team that has a winning record. And the only reason why I say a winning record is because Howard University is at 500. Now, it's still considered a winning record, but at the same time um, at the same time they are still at 500 whereas North Carolina Central more than likely let's just say for instance if they are unsuccessful in making it to the cricket wireless celebration bowl they will almost be guaranteed an opportunity to go to the playoff, the F, F, FCS championship uh, playoffs. But let's take a look real quick at the games today. Now, major implications here, and let's start from the bottom up. North Carolina Central plays Delaware State. And I apologize to folks from folks from from Delaware State, but I personally think that because of this game, that because of this game, what's going to happen is that this is going to be a scrimmage for North Carolina Central. I apologize to the, all of the fans from North Carolina, uh, from Delaware State. But unfortunately, I don't see Delaware State uh, being able to put up a fight, that much of a fight against North Carolina Central. And not only that, but this is perhaps the worst time for Delaware State to actually play North Carolina Central is for them coming off of a loss and playing them after they had a 50 spot hung on them. And with Delaware State, playing North Carolina Central with North Carolina Central winning this game then North Carolina Central will still be in a position 
where they can go to the celebration bowl. Now, as you can see, you have, where as you can see, you have Norfolk State and South Carolina State. They're just playing for a positioning. They're just playing uh, for pride, playing out, playing out the remainder of the season. But the one thing is going up to the top game, as you can see, Howard University and Morgan State. Now, let's just say, for instance, as we take a look at this schedule for today, let's just say, for instance, for happenstance, that for whatever reason, in some kind of way, Delaware State is able to defeat North Carolina Central. Let's just say Delaware State is able to defeat North Carolina Central. If they are able to pull off this victory and Morgan State defeats Howard University, then what can actually transpire here, folks, is that with this victory, with Morgan State defeating Howard, and if Delaware State some kind of way is able to defeat North Carolina Central, folks, what happens here is that, guess what? <laughs> Morgan State now will qualify to go to the Cricket Wildest Celebration Bowl representing the MEAC. So because of the loss for North Carolina Central, because of the loss of North Carolina Central losing to Howard University. This set up all sorts of crazy scenarios, folks. This set up all sorts of wild things that's going to happen and everything that we need to pay close attention to in the MEAC games today. And all I have to say is for those of you who are not paying any kind of attention to this particular game, and when I, when I say this particular game, I mean the Howard University against Morgan State. And also, I would even say pay close attention to North Carolina Central against Delaware State. Because, trust me, anything can happen. You line up against someone else, anything can happen. Anyone can win on any given day. As I said, and uh, there's a team by the name of Virginia Lynchburg. All of a sudden... They started playing very good football. And with that being the case, they actually won a couple of games. And they actually started scoring a lot of points in some of those games. But the one thing I have to say, folks, more than anything else is this. Is, is, is one thing I have to say is that for everything that's going on, we always have to pay close attention to all of the games and everything that's going on. And guess who I have in the house today? And I want her to say hello to everyone. And this is our past president for the JSU NAA, the Jackson State University National Alumni. And I just want you to say, oh my God, see, see, this is a place to be. This is a place to be. But, Miss Yolanda, oh, I'm sorry. Could you introduce yourself? Hello, hello, Tiger family. I am Yolanda Owens. I had the honor of serving as alumni president from 2014 to 2018. We are here. It is the Alcorn versus JSU game. The energy is amazing. We are looking forward to this win. If you are not here, Maybe you can get here. <laughs> you sure the tickets but aren't sold out yet? Tickets are probably sold out, but it is an amazing energy out here, and we are just excited to be back in Jackson. Yes. And see, this is what it's all about. This is why I wanted to be at the alumni tent. Uh, even though we had some issues initially getting the signal out, uh, but this is why you want to come, because you get all of the real people coming here and, and just being able to bump into Miss Owens here oh please 
Yes. This, this was one of my presidents that I served on yes. the fourth JSU we NAA. We love working together. Love. It was an amazing time. And, and the things that she did for the National Alumni Association and where we are today, thank you very much. It was I'm my serious. honor, absolutely I'm, my honor to serve my alma mater. And, and see, these are things that hopefully we get a chance. Well, no, it's not a hope because she still participates. In the, in the National Alumni Association with everything that she does. So all I have to say is thank you very much. It and, was my pleasure. And yes. I'm gonna go off air for about 10 seconds real quick. It's great to see her. And I got somebody else over here. Man, like I said, this is the place to be. And, and you know I have to pray for him because he got on these funny looking colors over his head. No, prop it up, Doc, prop it up. Uh, see, like I said, he's got these funny looking colors on his head. But you know what? We got to support each other because guess what? My pastor is an alpha. So I pray for him all the time too. <laughs> Don, man. Money Mike, what's up, man? Another beautiful day. And see, this Another is what I'm talking day. Another brother that I marched with back in 1980. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> it, it was a few years ago. I like that. It, it was a few years ago. Introduce yourself, man. Come in. Hey, Donald Richardson, um, Jackson State alum. I don't want to tell you what year because that'll give it away. <laughs> but anyway, Sonic Boom alum for sure. Four years in the boom. And, uh, and, and even more at the university. I have a degree in mathematics. A very proud educator from Little Rock, Arkansas, by way of Greenville, Mississippi, and Leland, Mississippi, too. Got to give props where props is due. Love. So glad to be here at the Capital City Classic or the Soul Bowl, whichever one you choose to call it. Yes. It is a tradition. We love the Alcorn alumni. We love our Jackson State alumni. We love our HBCU alumni. And we represent them proudly and our SWAC alumni. So, hey, and kudos so to this man right here for doing this. And kudos to both universities and people. And see, this is what it's all about. Just making sure we're in the house seeing fans, seeing the alums come back, and just having some kind of fun. And, and man, it's been, now, now, now you, we marched together in the boom. Yes. What instrument did you play? I played the baritone horn, the Jackson State Band, and the Sonic Boom in the South. We call them the Funky Tones. And we were funky. Man, <laughs> look, it was my freshman year. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're not going to say years, are we? No, okay. we're not going to say the years. <laughs> My freshman year, as much as I hate saying this, but my freshman year, we played Southern University. Southern marched in here, and I remember the first note they played, they plastered me to the wall. They plastered me to the stadium, much as I hate to say that. But the next three years, we played Southern. It was ugly. It was ugly. Those, those next three years that we played Southern, we blew them out of the stands. It didn't make any sense how bad we did them. Let me amen to that. We certainly did. Hey, his freshman year, I'll give it to him. It was a rough year for us. We had brand new uniforms, and it rained that year. And so they kept us on the bus because they didn't want to ruin our uniforms with that, with that rain that came. So Southern got a chance to show out without us really being present. But those next three years, man, we went to Southern. Now, remember, it rained that next year in Southern. We were marching in the stadium. We did. And then all of a sudden, it rained, and we were, man, well, I, I don't want to give too much information. All I can say is that every part of me was wet. Yes, sir. Every part of us was wet. But when we got in the stands, we didn't have nothing to lose. We blew the hell out of Southern University that year in the stands. And when we got on the field, it didn't make any sense what we did to Southern on the field. Even the fans for Southern University, they were like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you remember that? I, I remember that very well. I got to say this. I would be remiss in my duties as a former Boom alumni if I didn't say, oh, Grambling, we got y'all too. We dropped a boom on you. Oh, man. Grambling. <laughs> oh, and yeah, because as a matter of fact, that was Grambling's first year 
opening up that stadium. That's and, right. And we marched in. I'll never forget. We we cause we sat on the bus that year. We too. dropped on, dropped the bomb on Gremlin to corner phrase from the Gap Band. We dropped the bomb on Gr on Gremlin. It was that first year. That's my sophomore year. Yes, sir. Oh, dude. It was. Oh man. It was. That was Dow Taylor's first year. Yes, sir. And what we did to to, to bands that first year. And Dow Taylor happens to be an alum of the Sonic Boom of the South. He came in under. Uh, did he march? He marched in the prof, didn't he? He did. Uh, yeah, I think he did. He, he marched in the prof as well as Hal Halton, which who brought me in. Uh, Mr. Halton brought me in. And but that first year, how we treated those bands, it was ugly. It was. It didn't make any sense. And that last year, and uh, the last game. Our last game, my freshman year, we weren't able to get out of the, the bus against Alcorn. Right. Remember, the, the rain was, it was raining so hard that night, the rain was swirling in the air. Exactly. And that was, and that was against Alcorn. That was a night game. It seems like they, we hardly ever have night games anymore. That's true. But, but, but for that particular event, and the following year, it's been ugly. And... I, I should feel sorry for the other bands, but I don't. Neither do I. And 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 this year, hey, all is fair in love and war and thunder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don, man, let me let you go because I know you're here, looking to enjoy yourself, and I'm seeing and I'm seeing other band members walking by. Uh, as a matter of fact, I need to get door. Uh, uh -huh. I see, because I pledge KK Psy as well as Phi Beta Sigma, and I'm seeing both, both of them right here, and I'd love to be able to get them over here and, and just say, for them to just say hi, but but uh, we're going to see whether or not we can get their attention and, and have them to come over. But, but, but yet and still, guys, this is what it's actually all about for the things that we do, for the things that we did, and... And, and 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 guys this 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 is what we do this is the fun that we have in everything that's going on and and other and we got other band members and like i said the greatest band in all of the land i don't care what anyone else says they made it and and for whatever reason man come on in here <laughs> and, and see come on in here Oh, no. and, and see, like I said, we have the greatest band in all of the land. And I marched with these guys right here. And the embarrassment that we put on these other guys, these other bands, I don't apologize for it. I don't apologize for it at all. We made them look all bad. Am I right, guys? You're absolutely right. And guess what? And guess what? My brother right here, my fraternity brother right here, he was part of War and Thunder. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. 82 to 85. Tell about the embarrassment you put on them. The embarrassment that you guys used to put on the other other, other schools. I'm not going to bring up old rivalries, but like they say, today it's over with. We playing for pride. All going. I'm sorry, but the boom. <laughs> They coming for you. <laughs> and see, that is. Well, I'm going to bring it up. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Uh, I marched from 81. All right, brother. Good seeing you. I marched the band from 81 to 85. Uh-huh. And those were the years that not only did we own the, the halftime show, we owned the swag on the football field. It was ugly. Uh, we got, what, two, three, three swag championships while... During that era, we were 28. We won 28 straight games, championship, uh, uh, SWAT games. We were 28 and 0. So everybody talks about this previous coach that we had and all of the things that he did. A lot of people still need to give Jackson State the credit that we actually earned and who we actually are right. because of the things that we actually did prior to. Jackson State actually has more individuals in the NFL Hall of Fame than Mississippi State, Ole Miss, That's right. and Southern Mississippi. That's right. The most they have, Ole Miss and I think Mississippi State, uh, but the most they have is three. How many we have? Four. And realistically, we should have seven. But I agree. 
but it's still up for discussion whether or not those will be able to get in uh, via the Alumni Hall of Fame members, but that's all right. But Jackson State is where it is. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell who you are. You mentioned the, the year that you marched, but tell who you are and also that magnificent also Greek organization oh, okay. that you belong to. You know that that the great blue and white. The great blue and white. Yeah. So, but but tell who you are okay, and all well, the other. My things. name is uh, Kenneth Archer. I'm a 1985 graduate of Jackson State University, and as I previously stated, I marched in the Sonic Boom of the South all four years while I was there. Um, currently, I am the the Southeast Regional Vice President for the National Alumni Association where I have responsibility for all the chapters in the states in the southeast, which includes Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, North South Carolina, Florida, and the Cattle to be in Islands, man. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we don't have a chapter that yet, but I'm oh, working on coming. it. It's coming. It's coming. I'm working on it. It's coming. And I am, as Michael said, I am a member of the illustrious fraternity, the one, the only, True Blue Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. There it is, folks, right there. Actually, I pledged this brother right here. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. What was my name? <laughs> Huggy Bear. Big brother Huggy Bear. <laughs> Son of a millionaire. Where's the shades to hide the glare? Shades his face with nothing but dare. Pledge he don't break our back, but he don't care. We're on our knees like rats eating cheese, begging please. How may I serve thee? Big brother Huggy Bear. <laughs> and see, like I said, there it is right, right. there, folks. Phi Beta Sigma Incorporated. And as a matter of fact, in the Midwest, we will have our Midwest regional meeting in Indianapolis, Indiana. And we're preparing for that now. He's the president of the Sonic Boom. Oh, bring him over. Paul. Yes. I'm going to turn the mic over to him. Awesome, awesome. Tell him what you're doing. Tell him what we're doing. Okay. And, oh. see, and see, what's happening now is that everything that we do, we're always preparing. We're always looking to uh, make sure that... We're doing our best. We're preparing. And what's happening now is that I'm getting ready to turn it over to the alumni president for the Sonic Boom of the South. And could you introduce yourself, please? Absolutely. My name is Carl Cunningham. I'm the president of the Sonic Boom Alumni Association. I hail from Mobile, Alabama, and I marched in the boom from 1991 to 1994. What instrument did you play? Played the trombone. 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 See, and see, I'm getting all the love from the boom members here because, as I said, I don't care what anyone else says. I don't care what the voters are saying. We are, has been, and shall be the number one band that is called of the land. And so I do understand that with uh, what they did with um, trying to have. Um, an award for the number one band because all the other bands have been overshadowed by the sonic boom that is correct and, and i do understand that so they have to give some kind of respect am i uh, what that, that would be a good word yeah they're trying to give some kind of respect to the other bands because they're truly overshadowed by what we do and to give some kind of street cred to them okay i get it but when it boils down to it you have Jackson State and everybody else. And everybody else. So so the world knows that we are the summa cum laude of bands, the famous sonic boom of the South. South. And we also have as the J-Sets. And the Prance and J-Sets. And J-5, the, the awesome drum majors. Everyone. Yes. And as a matter of fact, I represent Tower Power. I represent Tower Power and, and all of the other organizations. Oh my God! So hold up a minute. Hold up a minute. So I, I'm, I'm seeing my classmates here from college. I'm seeing my classmates here from high school, and so I got to get them on. I got to get them on the air. So, so you got to hold up. You got to come over here. So, but look, Carl. Yes, sir. Tell us. Uh, finish up with what's going on with the Sonic Boom. Absolutely. So the Sonic Boom Alumni Association, we support the endeavors of our beloved Sonic Boom of the South. So last night, the Sonic Boom Alumni Association gave all the band students uh, phone chargers. 
and the students love that and so we're here to support our students because it's important that they see us as donors and as givers and so when they graduate they can do the same and as a matter of fact as much as i'm embarrassed to say i gotta pay my dues <laughs> <laughs> we need you to pay your dues. Yeah, I, I got to pay my dues. But the one thing is, more than anything else, you let me know if there's anything you need. Yes. Okay? Okay. Uh, if there's anything you need for the boom that we can provide. Yes. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you let me know. We'll Seriously. Uh, okay. and, and yes, I have to admit on air. I've been negligent. I have to pay my dues because I jump on everyone else about paying their dues because I'm a lifetime member of the National Association for Jackson State. So I'm looking to be a National Association member yeah. for the boom. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that. So I got you. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. All right. so, so this is what it's all about. But see, now I've been hitting up all of my college classmates and everyone that I march with. Now this happens to be someone I went to high school with. And this brother here, we graduated together from high school. And we just celebrated our uh, year of um, high school. Okay. Yes, I have to say it, 40 years. 40 years. 40 years. 40 years high school graduation. Man, I cannot believe it. Man, Terry, no, no, screw that. <laughs> Man, it's, it's been great. See, this is one of my, he's not my blood brother, but this is my brother here. If he were to call me at 3 o'clock in the morning, whatever he needs, I got him. There are only, literally, only a handful of people I will ever, ever, say that to. This is one person I will always say any time of day, any time of night, all he has to do is pick up the phone and just say, hey, I need, and it doesn't matter what the need is, I got him. We had some good times in high school. Oh, yes, we did. Yes, and, we did. And, and, but, but, but the only thing is, is that I still have to pray for him, you know, every once in a while. Plus, I'm, 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 I'm looking at what he got on here. You know, yeah. <laughs> but well, you know what? But now go ahead. Go I only ahead. got this on because of my kids. My kids went to all call and everything. And one coming around here now and everything. But I'm a military man. I didn't attend any university. That's all right. Yeah. That's all right because you served the country. I served thank, the country. Thank yeah. you very much yeah. for serving. But, uh, now look at this big brother here. I'm like, <laughs> dang. Now he looks like now. Now you talk about somebody that look like they spit out their son. He looks like he spit out his son here. Why don't you introduce yourself? I mean, this is a big brother. I will always be your friend, man. I'll, I'll always, always be your friend. Always, man. Always. No, I'm looking at your son. I'm like, I'll always be your friend because of him. Uh, introduce yourself, man. Well, say introduce yourself. Oh. I'm Adrian Russ, Terry Russ, son. I graduated from Alcorn State University 2013, 2015. What did you do at Alcorn? I majored in agriculture economics. I didn't play football. You didn't play football? I didn't. Wait a minute. Oh, that was Caesar's son that played football. Yeah, Caesar. Okay, yeah. that's right. Yeah. He did it at Colin. Yeah. I thought you played football. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I thought you played football. But but see, this is family. We went to a small school in Centerville, Mississippi. And in Centerville, we only had we had less than 30 people to graduate in our class. Am I right? See? <laughs> And see, we talk about this. Like there was a 21. Yeah, and we talk about this all the time. And, and we had our 40th, our 40th high school class reunion this past, gosh, this past summer. And just to have something like that, and to see the number of people to to, uh, to come in and just have a good time from all around the country was beautiful. Well, I'm going to let you guys go, but man, you, man. this is great. Yeah. See, this, this, is, this, this, this is close here. This is close right here. Love you like a brother, but it's a battle right now. Oh, yeah. See, ain't no love right now. Uh, well, well, let's say there's love right now. But at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to hate his guts. 
and there is no love here when it comes to three o'clock. So that's my baby. Oh, this your baby here? Yeah, that's the baby. Bring him on in. But ain't gonna be no love at three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Two o'clock. What's up? What's up? Say hi. What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? Oh no, see, he gonna be just like his dad. Come on, what's up, y'all? Come on, man. See, he gonna be just like his dad. But but see, my name's Terrell Russ and play football from McComb High School, number seven four all day. All day. See, this is family. This is why I came here because I wanted to be able to I wanted to be able to come here to the alumni tent where everyone would come, everyone hung out, and just have a good time. Because just to see this brother here, man, see, see, this made my day. I don't I don't care about anybody else I see. This made my day. So, man, look, good seeing you, man. Yeah, let me let y'all go. Okay, but I know I know they didn't come just to see me. So, but, but look. Say, say bye, because I, I got to have you saying the See y'all later. Nice being on the air with you all. Thank you. Yeah, Doc. Thanks, man. See, that's family. That's family. And that's, like I said, if Tim... That, sorry about that. If he were to ask me anything at any point in time, we were together in high school. That's one of those brothers that, yes, hadn't seen each other for a couple of years. But if he were to call me at any time, any time, day or night, I got his back. Any time. We, we, yeah, high school, 40 years ago. And as you can see, we got all of this great stuff. But you know what? That's what it's all about. Got his boys there with him. Got the family. That's a beautiful thing. My family, uh, they decided to just watch this game from a very comfortable place uh, at home. So I said, okay, not a problem. Just enjoy yourself, kick back, and just enjoy what's there. But let's go back and continue to talk about the MEAC because we did not get a chance to finish talking about the MEAC conference. We haven't even gotten to the SWAC yet. But for the MEAC conference, as I said, there is so much happening here for the MEAC conference. And oh my gosh, and see, here's someone else. I'm not even going to get a chance to get to uh, the MEAC and the SWAC. This is someone else. Say hi. Hey, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and class of 1987, JSU alumni. See, How are you? Now, tell who you are. I know who you are. Oh, I am Monica Stewart Wilson. And see, somebody else my family has been knowing for. Triple legacy of JSU. Now, how long have we been knowing each other? About 75,000 years? How long about what? We've been knowing each other about 75,000 oh years. Oh, my goodness. We have been knowing each other probably. It's been a minute. It's been a before minute. Before we can even remember, probably. Uh, see, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. And because I marched with uh, Peter. Oh, wow. And he was in the boom. Yep. He yep. played trumpet. Yep. So it's just a family affair here. Family friend. Lifetime family friend. Lifetime. Lifetime. Lifetime family friend. And, Will always be. And, and so this is what it's all about. So how long you been here at the, at the tailgate? I came here at 11 o'clock. Oh, so you made it as time as, as the gates open. Probably so. Yeah. yeah. I see. work across the street, so I um, came right across the street. Voted all traffic. <laughs> so you, so you took advantage of an opportunity. I took advantage of opportunity. When you have those opportunities, God has given you. You must take advantage. <laughs> see, that's what I'm talking about. Being smart, right? Now, look, I can't that traffic yet. Look, you got to be smart. You got to know where to go. You got to know where to, uh, how to flow, and where to park. Yeah, I was able to take advantage of an opportunity being an alumni member, and so I was able to park across the street. So I said, okay. Uh, Cause I needed to bring my stuff over here, and not only that. Last time I was here last year, I got handicapped where I couldn't get out oh, wow. in okay. of the tailgate. So I was <laughs> stuck after the game for about an hour, trying to figure out how am I gonna bob and weave <laughs> through here yeah, to get absolutely. out. Yes, but you know it's worth it because this is a life. This is an opportunity a lot of people do not have. 
just coming here, being with like-minded people, even if it's ASU. Hey, my sister went to Alcorn. She graduated full ride scholarship, so I have nothing against Alcorn except today I do want us to beat them. Yes. But you know, just being in the VIP tent. Yes. Uh, with Jackson State. I'm a life member, alumni. This is just great, man. It's a beautiful day. Life oh, is good. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. And as a matter of fact, uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, let's take a look at the crowd again. Uh, it's been a while since I had a chance to uh, uh, pan the crowd. And so you get a chance to see what the crowd looks like and see where they are. They're all underneath the tent. As you can hear, they're playing the song. Get ready. And the fans are here. You even have some Alcorn fans here. We're praying for all of the Alcornites. Uh, because, uh, but you know what? It takes all of us. And, and this is what's happening here, folks. Everybody's here enjoying themselves. And, and gosh, and where are we, folks? Where are we? And I'm going to say it one more time. Where are we? And as we look up, we are here at the JSU Tiger Stadium. And so I'll say this one more time, Monica. It's a pleasure to see you here once again. Always good to see you, Mike. And so take care. Keep up the good work. More than likely, we'll be seeing each other very soon. Right. <laughs> yeah, at a dinner sometime real soon, probably. You and Shalise, me and y'all twins. Yes, yes. The older you got, the closer yeah, we look. Yeah, she is. She, uh, oh, as a matter of fact, she's probably she's probably gonna kill me because I forgot to text her last night. Yeah, my mom is probably gonna kill me. <laughs> right. Take care of yourself. All right. All right, Don. Hey, Take it easy. And and see, folks, this is a hap. This is a, this is this is the happening. This is having fun. This is what we do. This is how we get into it. This is how we have our fun. This is how we. Make sure we continue to network. This is how we continue to make sure we bring in alumni. And this is how we make sure we grow the alumni association. And as a matter of fact, I'm seeing a um, uh, couple of uh, alumni members I do want to bring in over here. But I still haven't finished talking about the MEAC conference and what can happen today in the MEAC conference. And I'll try to see if I can finish up with the MEAC before I get to the SWAT. But as I was saying, as far as the MEAC conference goes, uh, hopefully I finish. And with the MEAC conference, as you can see today, Morgan State plays Howard. North Carolina State plays Delaware State. If Morgan State beats Howard, Delaware State figures out a way to defeat North Carolina Central, guess what happens? Morgan State goes to where? The Celebration Bowl. But if Howard wins, it doesn't matter what happens to North Carolina Central. If Howard University defeats Morgan State today, then Howard University has a one-way ticket to the Celebration Bowl. That's all they have to do is they go ahead and and they play in the Celebration Bowl. And I don't know if this is the football team coming in, but we have a lot of buses coming in uh, that says JSU Tigers. And let's see if I can actually show those buses coming in. I think I missed them. But we had uh, four buses coming in, and I know it's not the band because the band pushes close to 10 buses. So more than likely, it's either band members, I'm sorry, the football team, or a busload of other fans coming in. And there you see one of the buses going by. But as we continue on talking about the MEAC, it's, it's just going to be an interesting game, folks about what's going to transpire and who's going to win and how the game is going to look. But now, finally, finally, let's get to the SWAC conference. And in the SWAC conference, this is, how you doing? 
This is the games that we have that were played in the SWAC conference. And for the SWAC conference, what we actually have is that, as you can see the scores, you actually have Grambling defeating Arkansas Pine Bluff. And then you had Bethune all of a sudden, slowly but surely, putting together a winning schedule, putting together a winning team, and all of a sudden, slowly but surely, winning their last few games, they, de they defeated Alabama A&M. Now, granted, it was a home game for Alabama, uh, I mean, a home game for Bethune-Cookman. They were hosting Alabama A&M, but yet and still, they were able to pull off that victory. And next, you have Southern University. Now, for anyone to come in and defeat Southern University in Mumford Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, that says a lot. And here you are, you had Prairie View. Prairie View defeated Southern University in Mumford Stadium. And they defeated them by a score of 27 to 21. That's one of the hardest places in the SWAC to win in, at any point in time is to go into Southern University and win that game. And they were able to pull off a victory. And there are great implications because of that. And then, of course, Alabama State went in the Valley and defeated Mississippi Valley State by a score of 20 to 3. And Florida A&M had a scrimmage against Lincoln University of Colorado. And, of course, as you can see, that game score was 28 to 0. And finally, the game that was the biggest surprise to everyone, Alcorn traveled to Houston, Texas to face ten, uh, Texas Southern. And they ended up losing to Texas Southern by a score of 44 to 10. That perhaps was one of the biggest surprises of the weekend because all Southern University had to do, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, all Alcorn had to do was win that game against Texas Southern and then they would have put themselves in a much better position for this weekend because guess what? And, and we'll come back to the, uh, to the standings later. But because of this weekend, look at the games that are being played this weekend. Alcorn plays Jackson State. Alcorn must, I repeat, Alcorn must win against Jackson State to keep their hopes alive to go to the SWAC championship game. And who's going to be on the other side of the field against the West? It's going to be Florida A&M. Florida A&M punched their ticket to the SWAC championship game. I'm sorry. I've always said from day one, whoever wins the game between Jackson State and Florida A&M will win the East. And guess what? I'm correct. And Florida A&M continued to march through the East. And they defeated every opponent before them. And so Florida A&M could lose 75,000 to zero to Bethune-Cookman. It won't matter. For the mere fact, they ended up winning all of the other games. So they can lose this game to Bethune-Cookman, and it won't matter. This is just a game for pride. I'll, I'll tell you what my son says later. But as far as Jackson State and Alcorn, Alabama State and Prairie View, those are the two games with the biggest implications to be played. Now, of course, there is one more game that's out there Grambling against Southern in the Bayou Classic, which is going to be later on, and that's going to be next week, which plays a major role as well. But for this week and this weekend alone, here we are. We have Jackson State hosting Alcorn, Prairie View hosting Alabama State. Now, if Alcorn is able to defeat Jackson State, and Prairie View ends up losing to Alabama State, Alcorn State has clear path to the SWAC championship game. But the only problem is, if Jackson State defeats 
Prairie, uh, Alcorn, and Prairie View defeats Alabama State, then Prairie View, because the, the two teams are tied at the top of the standings as we go back, and as you can see, Alcorn and Prairie View, they are tied at the top of the standings in the West at 5-2. and two. And as we go back, if Prairie View defeats Alabama State, Jackson State defeats Alcorn, Prairie View has a clear path because Prairie View defeated Alcorn earlier. And by virtue of that, they would put themselves in a position to go to the SWAC championship game. But if Alcorn were to lose and Prairie View were to lose, and now it depends upon Southern and Grambling because now those two teams, Alcorn and Prairie View, would then have three losses. Currently, Southern has three losses, but the difference is, is that Alcorn, by virtue of defeating Southern and by virtue of defeating Grambling, puts themselves in a much better position over over. Grambling and Southern. So, with all of the implications that we have, and with everything that's going to transpire in this game, and for everything that's going on, it's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens. And and I'm just going to be interested in seeing whether or not which team will actually show up and which team is going to stand out for that Alcorn team? Is it going to be that team that came out and went down and defeated Grambling? I mean, when Graham came to Alcorn and they were able to come back and win? Or is it going to be that team that went down to Texas Southern and Texas Southern just laid the, just laid the hammer on Alcorn? That was a huge surprise, folks. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. That was a huge surprise to see Alcorn lose, as I said, Alcorn to actually lose to Texas Southern. That was, that was just one of those losses that I just, I just saw, and I, was, and I watched that game. And Texas Southern essentially owned Alcorn. And if you had seen Alcorn... The physical stature of the players that's why you must play the game because just looking at the physical stature of the of the players for all corn they were bigger stronger in some cases they appeared faster but the game scheme uh, that was put together against all corn by Texas Southern by coach McKinney it said a whole lot and they were able to do a lot against him. And all I have to say is everything that they put together against Alcorn for Texas Southern, what Texas Southern did against Alcorn, hopefully with Jackson State having a bye week, they were able to glean a lot from that Texas Southern game against Alcorn. Because I'm looking here at all of the fans around here that are coming to this game to just have a great time. I've interviewed fans, uh, alums from Jackson State. As you saw, I interviewed one of my dearest friends from high school, Terry Russ, and then seeing all the other fans here and seeing what they're able to bring to the table, seeing the fun that they're able to, to talk about and, and, and everything that we're doing here. It's, it's, it's just a wonderful thing, folks. But the bottom line is, is what are you doing right now? Are you in a position where you can come down to the game? Are you in a position where you can come and enjoy this beautiful, this wonderful atmosphere? And as a matter of fact, I'm going to put on my glasses. Unfortunately, they're right now they're shades. But for what we have is that gotta got to have on shades right now. So let me put on my shades real quick. So here we are with shades on right now. 
and because I apologize with the sun being right here and with me not being able to see everything I want to be able to see but 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 folks for everybody that's here you have people riding on you have people riding on bikes and everything so uh, it, it's good it's good to see what's happening here I see my fraternity brothers here and um, it's, it's good for everything that's going on it's just a beautiful day God has blessed us with a beautiful day out here and going back and and look at the smoke look at the smoke look at that smoke so you already know what's going on right there need I say any more about what's happening over in that area in that area is a barbecue somebody is having a barbecue somebody is kicking it right now for what they're doing and all I have to say is this I want some of that what's over there I don't know what I need to do but I'm gonna see what I can do to get me some food from over in that area and and so like I said you can tell somebody's over there queuing and they over there having themselves a really 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 good time and and I just want to find out what I need to do to get over there and get me some cue so and, and you have all these other fans that are out here that are enjoying themselves and and man it's, it's just a beautiful atmosphere and as we continue I, I want to go back and continue to pan the crowd here And you see, and you see others. Just sitting down, talking, having a good time. The crowd is stand out a little bit. And I'm thinking what's happening is that a lot of them are prepared to go inside of the stadium. Uh, but we still have a nice crowd. You have some of the older alums here. And man, let me tell you something. Some of these older alums here, they are really looking sharp out here. And 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 just looking at some of these older alums, it's 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 a beautiful thing, folks. It's it's a beautiful thing. And and just watching it. Just watching everything that's happening, just watching everything that's going on. It's it's just it's just something to behold. It's it's really something to behold and it's something to enjoy so and and uh, and just to see everything that's happening every everything that's going on and just to be able to sit back and and watch others and I'm moving over to the side because I'm hoping to be able to bring in someone else to uh, speak to us on on air but but just to be able to watch the fans come in and and even though at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, we will actually see uh, all of these fans and for the people that are out here today uh, do we ha uh, will we be uh, we're friends now everybody's friends everybody's having a good time and what's happening Everybody's having a good time. Everybody's enjoying themselves. But at the same time, at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, folks, all of the love is going to be gone. Ain't no love for all coin. It's going to be, um, we're here to beat you. We're here to beat you bad. And it's not going to matter what it's looking like because and at the end of the day it's going to be all about bragging rights now one thing i can say is that jackson state does hold the record for the number of victories in this turn in this game uh we have um a 43 to 37 uh win yeah we have a 43 to 37 um uh win loss uh so we've won 43 games uh, all corn is 137 and I believe we've tied at least one game between the two of us 
But the bottom line is, folks, bottom line is, is that this is a rivalry that has been in place for a number of years, a number of years, since 1922, and it's been a fierce rivalry, but it's been one of those rivalries that it's a respectful rivalry more than anything else uh, because Alcorn is our natural rival because of them being right down the street just like Mississippi Valley State is right up Interstate 55 and for for this game the Soul Bowl and for everything that's going to transpire in this game we're looking forward to everything that's going to take place and how well each team is going to perform. It's going to be a great game. I, I, I mean, the pictures cannot show at all the number of people here and how well they are enjoying themselves. Uh, all Knights, family members, some went to Alcorn, some went to Jackson State. Some that went to Alcorn are coming to Jackson State to get the master's degree. Some who went to Jackson State are going to Alcorn to get the master's degree. And this is from undergrad to grad. And that tells you the synergy between the two. Uh, is that uh, because I personally have family members who graduated from Jackson State with their undergrad. And from there, they moved forward and went to Alcorn for their master's degree. And then I had some other cousins who graduated from Alcorn with their undergrad and came to J State to get their masters. It's all a family affair, folks. It's all a family affair. This is the Soul Bowl. And just to be able to watch fans be able to, and just to be able to watch fans come in and say hi and, and say, hey, this is what's going on. And now I have someone else I would love to introduce to you and I'll let him introduce himself and tell everything he does for the I love of Jackson State University. Well, thank you, Mike. I wish you would have gave me a set of headphones. Oh, I like to hear myself too. <laughs> See, but yet still, <laughs> he does everything he can for JSU. And this is right. Mr. JSU as far as I'm concerned because we go to him for everything that we right. need. So David, Okay, tell well, us who we tell us who you are and everything this morning. Right, right. So first, Mike, thank you for coming out for gracing us at this tailgate. I know it's the last game of the season, but you being here just put that special mark on it. So uh, again, I'm David Howard, director of alumni relations, and uh, my job, my team's job, is to engage the alumni to get them active. And active simply means just uh, joining the National Alumni Association, giving back financially, volunteering, uh, being a mentor. And just being a part of the vision of the Jackson State University. Uh huh. And see, this is what it's all about, folks, is making sure that everything that we do, we have people associated. Because we got to have people in different places to make sure everything happens for us. And see, he's still making sure he coordinates everything because he's the one that put together the alumni tent. And Correct. see, oh, yeah. And see, we pray for y'all. We, we, we love y'all. We love. <laughs> <laughs> and see, but look, just like I said, I got family who graduated from Alcorn. And so, <laughs> see, see, I got family that graduated from Alcorn, and I pray for I all of them. family too. And, and we pray for all of them. So, <laughs> so, so you guys talking about the tailgate tent? I want, I was, that's why I was calling you. So I would say the tailgate has to be one of our best engagement uh, events. We feed close to 500, 800 alumni every home game we have a dj we have a stage we even come back after the game to do it again we call it like an afterglow so tonight after the game we're gonna light the tent back up bring out the dj i think we're gonna serve some gumbo tonight it's just a way for us to just to get to know our alumni a lot better you know what i'm saying and and so when we do ask them to join the national Alumni association or get back we're not coming as a stranger we're coming as a friend and see if as you take a look in the tent this is what's going on right now so, so take oh, yeah. a look. Take a look right there. That's oh, yeah. what's actually happening inside right. of the tent right now for everyone. So, right. so he's put this together. This is this is his thing, and this is what he does. 
uh, making sure that everything that transpires, he's that guy. And so we want to make sure that you guys come out and you support and you support Jackson State University. If you don't support Jackson State University, then my thing is this: What's your purpose? What's your purpose? What's your purpose, folks? Look at this. Look at this. Just, just everybody, everyone under here, everybody. Oh yeah, is just having themselves a good old time. Yeah, if you're not here right now, you're missing out. And as a matter of fact, I want to get a little bit more underneath because I want to make sure we can see the DJ a little bit here. So, so hopefully we get a chance to see some of the DJ that's going on. Oh yeah, that looks good. Yeah, and see, just folks are on the here just enjoying themselves. Yeah. This, is, this is what it's about, folks. So, for, for every home game, folks, this is what we try to do. Yeah. This is what David does. Right. David puts this on for us. Correct. And, and so, for everything that we do, come down. Yeah. My thing is this. If you are not a part of the National Alumni Association right. for Jackson State University, then don't complain. Right. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear your complaints. <laughs> I don't want to hear, well, Jackson State should do this. Jackson State should do that. No. Have you paid your dues? Are you at least a member of the National Alumni Association? Are you a local member right. of a chapter? Are you a lifetime member? If you are not any of those, as far as the Alumni Association for Jackson State, please, folks, don't complain. Just don't. I don't want to hear it. It's the same thing as voting. If you don't take the time to vote, don't complain at what you receive. Because every vote matters. And as far as we're concerned, uh -huh. we want to hear what you have to say. How we can improve what we do. You're right. That's right. All voices are received. Exactly. And I would like to say one more thing, too, before I leave. I would encourage you next season to visit the alumni tailgate at least once. Experience this ultimate tailgate experience. You would truly, truly love it. So if you come down just at least one time next year, you'll truly enjoy it. Thank and, you, Mike. I gotta go clean up some stuff. And, and, I appreciate it. And see, and, and, as, and as David leaves, just, just, just take another glean at what's going on underneath that tailgate tent. Yeah. I mean, it's alumni friends, alumni family, and we saw a few of them here that came by and spoke to us earlier. And so, uh, David, Thank you very much. Well, yeah, one last thing. We also want sponsors too. So if you'd like to sponsor a tent here and sponsor, be a sponsor with us at our tailgate, we're open to that too. JSU NAA. That's right. Hit us up. Thank you, sir. Appreciate David. it. David, hey, man, thanks again. That's yes, right. And see, this is what it's all about, folks. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you in. We're trying to get you associated with what we're doing. We're trying to make sure that you are a part of everything that's going on here at Jackson State University. Uh, all of the fans, all of the friends of JSU, we're here, we're celebrating, we're making sure that you are associated with what we do. Uh, like I said, we have fans here from Alcorn, we have fans here from, of course, Jackson State University, and we are all having a good time. And as a matter of fact, let me see if I can get the camera over here real quick just to show you just the fans that are uh, standing up, just talking. And this, this tells you the camaraderie that we have. Jackson State Alcorn fans right there, just talking amongst themselves, having themselves a really good time, and just saying, okay, hi, how's it going? What's happening? Because we're all family. These are the things that we actually did together. And, and just to and just to have this type of camaraderie, just to have this kind of love for each other, this is family. This is what it's all about. One of my best friends from high school, Terry Russ, that was here earlier. His son graduate, graduated from Alcorn State University. Guess what? A lot of love. Like I said, if he were to call me at any time, day or night, and said, Mike, I need your help, I got him. You don't understand that. That's that kind of relationship that you have. That's that kind of relationship that you build. And, and any time you have that kind of uh, relationship, that kind of uh, love for one another, this is how you make things happen. This is how uh, things work around here. But 
as I said, going back to the football aspect of things, this game here between Jackson State and Alcorn, as I said, has been around since 1922. And Jackson State holds the lead in, in the series of uh, having 43 victories during that time span. And, but yet and still, um, Alcorn has always been there, always played a major role in the outcome of all of the games and they don't play and as a matter of fact the sun and i apologize because the we uh the one thing i cannot control is whether or not the sun going to and from as i said i apologize because i was not able to bring my tent uh i had limited uh, i had limited uh, control over what i was able to bring um to control how everything looked I will see if I can work on that for next year because um, I'm a control freak and I like to have a certain look because if we're going to be broadcasting everything has to be clean, pristine and look very nice. Um, but right now that's fine and I'm thankful for what we have. And But for this game and as I was talking about earlier, all corn must win today and they must have help from Prairie View but that game that Prairie View has to play today against Alabama State Alabama State and I'll say this right now Alabama State outside of Florida a &M, they have the next best winning record in the conference they have won as far as Alabama State they have won five straight games and let's go and take a look at that. Oh, let me make let me make this adjustment real quick. Uh, but Alabama State, they have won five. They have won five games in a row, and for them to have that type of winning percentage uh, for what they have done lately is saying a lot for the school. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not Alabama State can continue. And if Alabama State is able to continue, uh, I want to see what they're able to do. So as we take a look here, this is what Alabama State is looking like. Alabama State has won five games in a row. And with them winning five games in a row, Prairie View won their last two. And just seeing whether or not Prairie View can bring the same type of energy that, uh, that Alabama State brings, it's going to be kind of an interesting game to see whether or not they can do just that. If they're able to match that energy that Alabama State brings, then Prairie View may actually have a chance of pulling off a victory because if Prairie View is able to pull off a victory because of their win over Alcorn and Alcorn's loss to Texas Southern, what could actually happen, folks, is that Prairie View is on their way to the SWAC championship game against, guess who? Florida a &M. But we still have a lot to see. We still have a lot to... Uh, a lot of game to play on today and approaching 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time approaching 1 o'clock Central Standard Time it's roughly uh, and I apologize it's approaching uh, 147 Eastern Standard Time 1247 Central Standard Time so we have well over an hour to go before game time for today and because of that I'm going to close up shop a little early today and as a matter of fact uh, as a matter of fact I would love to be able to have uh, the court uh, for Jackson State University on campus so um, let's see if I can get them on camera real quick and so you guys can see the court <laughs> and 
And so here you are with the court for Jackson State University. You have Miss JSU, as you can see, and Mr. JSU. And there they are. They are taking their seat in the tent as well as the court for Jackson State and they're coming in and they're already jamming to the crowd jamming to the music that's going on and I'm hoping to be able to get someone in to be able to speak to us that we're live so do you have a minute so let's let's uh, let me bring mr. JSU in and why don't you introduce yourself and why don't you introduce oh, yeah. yourself we're here live and this is block sports and why don't you introduce yourself and tell what role you are with the court for jackson state university well black sports what's going on i am austin rolf a senior business marketing major from little Rock, arkansas it is with tenacious tiger pride i serve as the seventh mr jackson state university we're here at the all corn versus jsu soul bowl game i'm with the royal court as well so we're out here see and and you have miss jsu that's over uh, that's over to the side and i'm hoping to be able to get her in here as well because I'm just a little biased being a JSU grad and as usual the Royal Court is just absolutely gorgeous and so need I say more they're absolutely gorgeous looking at Miss JSU can you see if you can bring Miss JSU over here uh, and 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 so what's going on is that I'm um, trying to get Miss JSU watch your step there and getting Miss JSU over here and and here we are so please introduce yourself and where you come from and tell, tell us your history. Yes, so good afternoon everyone. I am Lauren Temple, a senior majoring in biology pre-medicine, hailing from Slidell, Louisiana, and I humbly serve as the 84th Miss Jackson State University. Wow. What are you planning on doing after you graduate from JSU? Yes, so being a biology pre-med major, I plan on becoming a dermatologist and helping African American people with their skin. See? Skin care. And as a matter of fact, just like the young lady that I spoke to that I marched with in the Sonic Boom earlier, we have to understand what it takes to actually take care of us. Yes. And if we don't take care of us, then whose fault is it? It's our fault. We have to understand, so thank you very much for what you're doing for us and what your plans are for when you graduate from Jackson State. I know you didn't you didn't plan on this, so I'm going to let you go so you can uh, take the time and speak with others. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And, and again, thank you very much. See, this, this is gorgeous. This is, this is my alma mater. And see, everybody, just absolutely gorgeous in terms of who we are, in terms of representing the school, representing the university, uh, and they're here making sure that they take the time and speak to others and, 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 and just enjoy what's going on. And, and as I said, we still have more people coming in, more people coming out, and, and I mean, it's, they're coming in just to say hi. And, and a lot of people now are trying to get their seats to go to the game because as I said we have about eight minutes to one Central Standard Time eight minutes to two Eastern Standard Time and slowly but surely people will start going into the stands to get their seats so they can get ready to cheer on either the Braves of Alcorn State the visiting team here today or the Tigers of Jackson State University and with all of that being said, folks, this has been a beautiful day, and I am going to make sure that next year, that when we come, we will have a better location, better setup, so when we come in to you, when we see you, we will be ready to broadcast in a much better, prettier, cleaner location so we can control everything that we see. So may God bless you, may God keep you, and root for your favorite HBCU. Make sure you support your favorite HBCU, and because guess what? 
I am. And that's what I'm doing right now. So, love, peace. I'm not going to say hair grease, but I, I, well, I guess I did say it. But just make sure you support your favorite HBCU. Be an alum. Pay your dues. And until the SWAC Championship and until Tuesday night, where we come back and do a quick wrap. God bless, and I'll see you guys later.